All right. So a salesman dressed up like a heat and air conditioning repairman came out to your house and told you you need major work done to your air handler. Maybe it's a train like this one or some other make and model. But if overpriced repair estimates make you sick, you'll want to watch how I bought myself one of these and used it to diagnose and fix an air handler for free. The mills behind the camera. Let's get started. Look, I'm probably going to catch a lot of flack for this, but I'm just going to say it. There's a lot of slimy HVAC repairmen out there who just want to sell you on overpriced or unnecessary repairs. And they're ruining the reputation of the honest ones who work in the industry. So later in this video, I'm going to give you a list of questions to ask if, in fact, you call a repair person out to your house. Now, you be sure to stick around for that. Now, our story of a broken air handler. It was a dreamy summer, and the Bunny Winkle sisters were swimming over at Margie's house. She's the modern divorce woman what lives next door. Well, they eventually scampered inside to discover things were getting hot and steamy. The fan wasn't turning on in Margie's air handler, which is unusual. Coming through the back door, Margie. So I came to the rescue, of course. Oh, God. And here's what I did. Now, I won't recommend for you to do this because I don't know what your skill level is or your ability to stay safe, all right? But I am going to reenact my process, though, because you might get a kick out of knowing how I uh, troubleshooted it. I first utilized this peephole. See, if the unit is on, you, you'd see a blinking light inside. But that's not the situation here. It's just a dark hole with no obvious energy. There's no power going to the control board. I checked the breaker in the garage. It wasn't tripped, but I reset it for good measure. Nope, still no power to the control board. So I know the power is coming from the breaker box, and next stop would be this shutoff switch. And you know, folks, your air handler is nothing but a big metal box with a handful of parts, most of which are replaceable. So you, you should question it if somebody tells you you need a whole new system just because yours is so old. And later I will be giving you those pointers on how to gently interrogate your repair person to tell if they're full of it or not. If you'd like a printable booklet, we're offering those now. Margie helped me type up several pages of wisdom and questions any honest service tech should be willing to answer. And just click the link beneath the video. It could save you. And, and here's where the non-contact voltage feature of this multimeter comes into play. I love this thing. Hey, Demel, make sure you put a link to Margie's booklet beneath the video, all right? Yeah. So we got voltage here. And when we flip the switch on, we got voltage here. So the switch is sending power to the air handler. Okay, time to turn this off for safety. And then I'm going to take the front panel off this air handler. And there is a door switch here that can go bad, but... We had a lot of lightning strikes lately, so checking the wires in the air handler's junction box seemed like a logical step to me. Now, this should only be done by certified, qualified people who charge you through the nose, even though it comes right apart with a basic nut driver. You can see where the wires come in through the conduit, and you can marvel at how the power leaves the junction box and then feeds energy to the air handler's components by way of the control board. But don't you ever apply this knowledge without hiring a team of professionals, all right? You're seeing everything reconnected in here now, but Margie's wire nuts had come loose, don't ask me how, and the connections were no longer intact. It's amazing it didn't create a bigger problem. Now, if there's serious scorched or blown out wires in here, yeah, maybe a power surge caused by a lightning strike was the culprit, or maybe your fan motor created the issue. Well, yeah, there's a secret way repair techs can test your fan motor without even removing it from the air handler. And having watched over 170 HVAC videos on the subject, that's going to be my next big step. 
Before testing the blower motor, I want to do a couple little things. I'm going to test to verify we have power now by simply pressing in the door switch. Of course, you got to restore power at the service switch. The system's turned off at the thermostat, though, because I don't want the fan motor to rev up until I test it. If you use your power of observation, you'll notice here this control board's mounted upside down. Probably installed by some kind of a wise guy. Yep. Oh. Yep. See, the little red light now turns on at the circuit board, so power is indeed going to the unit. Okay, I turned the power back off again, and I want to show you some simple maintenance items like this run capacitor. They occasionally need to be replaced, but they're only about 12 bucks. And you can test this while it's still in place, but you first need to remove the wires from the terminals. And because capacitors can carry a little juice, place a piece of metal across those terminals to discharge it. Yeah, I usually use Helen's switchblade to do stuff like this. Unless it's lodged in somebody's rib cage at the time. As an example, here's a new capacitor. I'm going to test it. Rated for 15 microfarads. And I'm going to test her using that same multimeter. A lot of multimeters don't have microfarads as an option, but this one does. See, I just rotate to this position and hit the selector switch three times until this symbol shows up, which is actually nanofarads. Uh, reading microfarads takes a minute. Uh, here, let me put this light on. And, yeah, like that. You got a shot of that, Demil? All right. Reading microfarads takes a minute, so I just keep holding down my probes. And you see that nanofarad symbol just turned to the microfarad symbol. Demil, are you getting that? Yeah. Well, there you go. 14.94 microfarads. So back at the air handler, the power's off, of course, and we're going to talk about the fan motor. I do a simple physical inspection first by reaching up inside of her to see if she's bound up. The fins are sharp, but I can carefully give her a spin. And, and you can see the direction of rotation right here on the drum, you see, plus a warning label that should not be ignored. But look. She spins smooth. You can get the camera up around the other side there, carefully. No physical obstructions. Seems to be balanced good. Now here, this is where the various fan speed wires get their marching orders from, and they connect to specific contacts on the circuit board. So I make it a point to snap good pictures of them before removing them. Yeah, you see my common wires tucked up there. I delicately work it off of its connection ever so gingerly. I check my resistance between my common wire and each one of the colored wires. Each wire is going to have a different resistance on it. The black one is usually the high speed, so it'll have the least resistance. And if I encounter any zero resistance readings, that means internally the fan has problems, like the windings have burned out and maybe they're even touching the frame of the motor. So I go through each one of the colored wires one by one. With a little research, I determined that the resistance values between the brown capacitor wires should be somewhere between 25 and 75 ohms, depending on the make of the motor. If there's no resistance here, your start windings are bad. Okay, good. See? I got resistance, so I'm going to reattach all these wires to where they go, and I feel better now about turning the thing on and doing an amp draw reading with the clamp part of my meter. But first, I want to give you a handful of tips on dealing with these HVAC repair outfits, because they're not all bad, but a lot of them are. First, it seems like common sense, but when you schedule them to come out, be sure to ask how much they charge for a service call. Ask if the cost of the service gets deducted from any repair costs as well, because it should. Number two, watch out for time frame games. For example, it's like 110 degrees outside and they tell you replacing the fan motor will take three weeks 
because they got to order the part. And But, oh, by the way, they can miraculously install an entire new system today for only $12,000 because they're having a special. That's a huge red flag, and that ain't no AC repairman at your house. It's a salesman. Next, adjust your perspective. It might feel like you're calling an ambulance for emergency help, but you're not. You're calling a business. Somebody who, by definition, wants to make money off somebody like you. Nothing wrong with that, as long as they're ethical. Number four. If they're trying to sell you on a new unit, ask for specifics. And I'll tell you right now, the excuse of, well, yours is so old, it really rubs me the wrong way. I mean, I'm old, and I work, don't I? You never know anything around here. Go back to bed, Helen. Finally, when they tell you what's wrong, ask for even deeper specifics about how they came to that conclusion and write down their answers right there in front of them. And I cover a lot more in that multi-page digital download, even some parts and price and information that'll blow your mind. Really common sense wisdom I've gathered after years of being a consumer just like you. All right, now prior to testing our fan motors amp draw, which by the way should be done with this door in place, I'm gonna fix this loose insulation. You wanna line up this peephole, of course, and I couldn't survive a project like this if it wasn't for this stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean this stuff. Foil HVAC tape. Seems like the way to go. Uh, this, uh, by the way, has all the joy of uh, working with fly paper. But it gets the job done right nice. And you want to check this rubber strip to make sure it's securely fastened as well. Now for the moment of truth. Will these wires overheat? Will the amp draw be too high? Specifically, we gotta monitor the hot wire, the black one, with help from Old Faithful. This thing does temperature too, by the way. And look, I, I ain't being greased to talk about this multimeter. I just like it because I've seen professionals using it, and it literally does everything for about the same price as a service call. So I'll put links to other meters in the description as well, not just this one. All right, the power's activated. And I don't know if you could see the decimal point there. It's drawn 0.18 amps, just enough to power the basic components. Margie, turn on the thermostat. See an initial startup surge there, uh, customary based on the charts and statistics I researched on the interweb. And then she settles in nice, purring like a kitten. Ain't she gorgeous? Yeah, I hope this helps you. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications and pick up one of them PDF files on your way out the door.